Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you a mixed media art journal page that I did with Brutus Monroe stamps and inks and a few other things which is what makes it mixed media. Um, I am a guest designer for the month of July for Brutus Monroe. They sent me a couple different stamps and I needed to make a couple different videos with these stamps. Um, in this this art journal page I'm using a couple pictures and I just wanted to show you the pictures because my printer is junk. I broke it by putting some off-brand ink cartridges in it. It's never printed the same. So my pictures don't turn out very nice when I print them. I need to get a new printer and I will eventually. Um, what I'm doing is taking these photos and I, I sized them so that they would fit in my Dilusions journal in, in the way that I wanted. I had this whole concept for this page planned in my head before I ever started, um, pretty much. And I wanted this picture of my son when he was much younger uh, to fit inside of the snow globe. The snow globe is, is the stamp that I got from Brutus Monroe. I wanted to feature it on the page, but I wanted to make a summer page, not a winter page. Um, you know, a snow globe can be any time. It could be from the boardwalk on the beach or whatever and have a cute little sand castle inside of it or something like that. It doesn't have to be a snow globe. But I decided to make this beach scene because recently I went to the beach with my son who is also in the other picture on the left-hand side, all grown up, and he's moving to the beach. And that's that's a plane ride away, so I can't see him when I want. Uh, he's going there for his doctorate program. And um, this is just kind of a, you know, it's sad. <laughs> it's sad when your kids move away and you won't, you know, you won't see them and they're all grown up and you wish they were small again. So that's what this page is about. So I'm using some Prismacolor pencils to colorize over the tops of the uh, inkjet printed pictures to make them look more like they are part of the art that they are you know penciled in and colored or whatever rather than pictures and then I'm going to stamp this image I'm using my um, I don't know what this thing is called it used to be called a misty but this is the one from Ranger Tim Holtz so I don't know what it says down there at the bottom, tonic maybe, but it's basically a tool where it allows you to stamp more than once um, and be very precise when you're stamping. I hardly ever use it, but I had to have it, of course, because that's how it is. So I stamped <clears throat> just on some regular paper because I know I'm going to collage this paper onto my page. I stamped it twice so that the black lines would be very, very dark. And I'm using the Brutus Monroe Detail Ink for that in the Raven color, which is black. And then I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut out the inside of the image that I stamped. And as I was doing this, I wished that I had stamped it on cardstock instead because this paper wasn't cooperating with me very well. But then I put the picture that I had colorized with the pencils inside the globe and I'm just gonna just tack it down there with a glue stick to get the positioning correct and uh, trim off the edges. I did have to color a little bit wider um, along the sand line to make it fit because I, I cut out, um, I, I cut along sand line and then I cut out around the figure so then, of course, now it has an empty background and I need it to have some type of a background. So these four little ink pads I purchased from Brutus Monroe and they're one by one. Um, I just wanted to try out their other inks. I got the detail ink as well, but I wanted to try out some other other inks. And these were summer colors. That's the reason that I picked them. So it come in this set of four and they're very pastel-y, summery colors which is where I was at at the time when I ordered them <laughs> after um, they had sent me the stamps. I thought you needed inks with stamps, so I went ahead and ordered some. Um, so I put that little, um, I, I just dragged the ink pads over the paper in lines like a sunset. 
starting with the blue and then working with the yellow, the pink, and the peach color. And um, then I glued that piece behind. So now I've got three layers. I've got the, the snow globe in the front, then the picture, then behind is this um, sunset looking type of a rainbow background made with the Brutus Monroe inks. Then I'm going to stamp over it again so that I can get some of those little lines and bubbles um, so that it looks more like a snow globe. So I'm lining it up over the top. I cleaned, cleaned the stamp off really well. Then I'm lining it up over the top. The first time I tried it, um, the stamp picked up the piece of paper. So I had to redo it again because I'm stamping the whole image and it's already cut out. I can't use the magnets to hold it, the paper down. So I just put a little piece of, a little bit of uh, glue stick on the back of it and I'll just wipe that off the platform later. So I got everything lined up and I used the detail ink again. I didn't want the one big bubble because it went right over my kid's head. <laughs> so I wiped it off with a baby wipe, just that one big bubble. I wiped the ink off and then stamped it. So now I have some of the extra lines and bubbles and things that were on the interior of that stamp. I know this all seems complicated, but if you just think about it a little bit, you'll figure it all out. <laughs> so now it's time to work on the art journal page. This is in my small dilutions journal. I'm trying to finish it out and uh, fill it all up so I can uh, say that I have a finished journal. You know, it's always nice when you finish something. I think I started this journal in 2015, so it's time to get it all the pages finished. So now I have this other picture of my son at the beach recently just um, looking out over the ocean. It's from the back. Um, he doesn't like his picture taken, just like his mom, and so I don't have any real pictures of him from the front. But um, that pensive looking out over the ocean type of a, a picture actually works very well for the concept of this picture or this art journal page. So I again cut a horizon line on the picture and then cut out the figure above the horizon line so that it'll fit onto here. So I'm doing that same thing I did with um, the little background of the snow globe. I'm using the ink pads, the four little ink pads from Brutus Monroe to color my sky by using them directly to the paper. I did uh, gesso this paper before I started. So it has a little bit of texture to it uh, where the gesso is, which, um, makes the little the little edges of the ink pad get a little bit torn up. <laughs> so some of the little pieces were coming off, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, these, these things are tools to me. And so I'm not really all that fussed when I have a little bit of wear to them, even though they're brand new. So this is some uh, craft colored deli paper that I'm gonna use to collage on the sand portion of the beach because to me it looks like the color of sand. So I'm starting with a fairly large piece, but I need to put my photograph on there and then kind of blend it in. Um, this, this one hasn't been colored yet. I, I printed it twice and I colored one of them and I cut that part out because you didn't need to see it um, because I didn't end up using that one. I ended up using this one that's <clears throat> a little bit um, of a different size. So then I'm just putting more pieces of the deli paper all around and doing what I call integrating. Um, sometimes I do this with paint, sometimes I do it with collage, but I'm integrating the photograph into the, the whole um, layout by letting some of the paper get collaged over the top. And then I'm also going to use the pencils again to integrate it a little bit more. Uh, you can tell that the color of the photograph is very different than what the color is of the sand paper that I'm putting on there. <laughs> Not real sand paper. Paper the color of sand. Um, like I said, my printer just doesn't, it just crap. It just doesn't print well. So that's something I have to work on. So then I didn't uh, color the bottom part of this snow globe. You could actually put and I should have put a, like a little word on it that says, you know, 
where it is or something. It, it was that picture was actually taken in San Diego. Um, so Santa Cruz, San Diego, pretty far apart, but they're both the same coastline anyway. <laughs> so, and they're several years apart. <clears throat> so I colored the bottom of the snow globe. I could have made it wood because it kind of looks like wood, but I wanted it to be, to have contrast against the sandy color of the paper. So I colored it blue with the same pencils that I used on his um, shirt. And then some also some lighter color ones using darker and lighter. These again are the Prismacolor pencils. These don't have, um, they're not like watercolor pencils or anything like that. They're actual colored pencils. You can blend them uh, using something called Gamsol, or I've also heard you could use baby oil, but I didn't do any blending on this. I just cut pencils. And I used the pencils on the whole page so that it all was cohesive and like itself. Um, I trimmed off the edges, added a little bit more sand. I decided that this snow globe would be sitting in the sand, so some of the sand would be in front of it, um, you know, to kind of tuck it into a little pocket. And I'm adding a few more layers just because that gives, you know, the one, one layer over the top of the other with the deli paper because it's translucent. <laughs> it gives a darker and lighter um, areas, which is what I wanted it to look like sand. Sand always has a lot of grooves and gr and bumps and um, footprints and and wave prints and whatever. Then I used the deli paper that I was using to protect the book. I tore out some cloud shapes. <clears throat> I put those in the sky just um, for a little bit more. It just it felt like there was a lot of texture at the bottom and nothing at the top. So I put on the little clouds. So once all that is done and all the collaging is done, <clears throat> it's time to add details with the Prismacolor pencils. So I bring those back out. I'm using some gray around the clouds <clears throat> to make them stand out a little bit more. I'm sorry my throat is so weird this morning. I'm using the browns uh, different colors of browns to add uh, detail into the sandy areas and to also integrate that photograph sand into the picture. I also still need to do some colorization on this other picture on the right hand side so you'll see me doing that. But basically adding all this color and um, you know scribbling in everything helps to get all the the different components of the page to work together. So now I'm coloring in uh, areas of the photograph on the right hand side. I'm coloring his shirt, coloring his shorts, uh, his legs, his face a little bit. Um, the pictures are so small that you can't really see the faces and that's fine. It's it's the, it's not about, I mean, it is about him, but it's not about him conceptually. It's about the idea of wishing that your child would be small again, you know, and that you could spend all the time in the world with them before they grow up and move on and you don't see them anymore. The faces were difficult. I couldn't really get the right colors and I kind of wished I was doing it with a different medium because of course with the colored pencils that you have the colors you have and then you get, there's not much blending or um, mixing or anything like that. Uh, I made the area where I had cut the photograph match the rest of the, the um, horizon line there by adding some blue and then adding in some gray uh, where the waves are coming in on the beach. And I decide that um, what gave me the idea kind of, well, part of the idea of the page was this song. The song is Time in a Bottle. And I think uh, it was released in 1973, according to the internet. 
by someone named Jim Croce. I, I know this song, I can sing it, but I don't remember when I heard it or um, why I know it, you know. I think a large part of my brain is consumed by lyrics, actually. If you were to look in there and you would, like, map the brain, there's a whole section there of lyrics, I'm telling you. I know so many lyrics to so many songs, but I don't remember when I heard this song. I just know it. So I'm writing the lyrics. If I could save time in a bottle, the first thing that I'd like to do is save every day till eternity passes away and spend them with you. I'm writing that. I wrote it in pencil first, letting it just be my own yucky handwriting. <laughs> But that's kind of part of the idea is that it's my handwriting. So I wrote it with pencil and then I wrote over the top with this Pentel pocket brush pen, which is an India ink pen. Then I'm going back in. I'm adding some more darks into the sand. Um, I just felt like it still needed something. And... I decide that that one little section right there needs something lighter, so I bring in a lighter color, the part where it's going over the bottom of the the snow globe. Then I go around the edges with a gray ink pad because um, I like edging. Overdid it a little bit, though. <laughs> and then I realize I need to bring in some light colors and... I need more stuff. It's just, it's not enough. So I decided to draw <clears throat> some shells onto some paper, color them with the color pencils, cut them out and put them on the page because that's what you have on a beach, right? Shells. The whole diet idea of going to the beach is to look for shells. Of course, you're supposed to leave them and not pick them up, but most people pick them up. So I draw them out with a pencil on this extra piece of paper that was from the from cutting out the photographs and color them in with some colored pencils, cut them out, glue them on just to, to add something else to the page. If I, I'm not sure, but perhaps Brutus Monroe has some stamps that are shells <laughs> and I could have used those, but I don't know if they do or don't actually, um, but that would have been cute. But I just drew them instead because I didn't have stamps. So I hope you're enjoying this video. If you are, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Leave me a like or comment or question below. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Also, the link to the blog post that goes along with this um, page on the Brutus Monroe blog, as well as links to the products that I used, will be in the description box below as well. So you can go and visit their um, page and their blog, read about it, look at the products that they have, see if you'd like to purchase some. So to finish up the page, I added some white acrylic paint into the clouds because I thought that they needed some highlights. And then I glued on all my little shells and um, yeah, I'm not sure I did anything else. I think that was pretty much it. A little bit more uh, pencil work with my Stabilo All Pencil, which is the graphite pencil that I use, I think, just to uh, darken the shadows around them and make sure there are not any white edges showing. And I think the last thing I did was to draw a few seagulls in the sky. And that was it for this page, which I did for Brutus Monroe using their stamp and inks. I hope you've enjoyed it. There are close-ups coming up at the end. Bye-bye.